Ni hao, I'm Lauren DeSantis and this is Capital Cooking in Taiwan. Capital Cooking travels to Taiwan for a culinary adventure. Join us as we explore the sights, culture, and taste of this subtropical Asian island. In this episode, we'll explore a tea plantation, learn traditional Taiwanese recipes, and shake up a cocktail in a secret downtown bar. But first things first, if this is a tropical island, I need a proof. So our first stop was Kenting on the southern coast of Taiwan. We stayed at the Chateau Beach Resort, right on the water, perfect for soaking up some sun. Ah, this is my type of vacation. I was told I couldn't just sleep on the beach all day, so I decided to try my luck bodyboarding. This proved to be harder than I remembered. So I was getting nowhere. Time to ask a professional for help. Luckily, there was this friendly tan lifeguard, Francis, who was happy to give me a free lesson. Pro in no time. All too soon though, we had to leave the beach and head north, far north, to visit a tea plantation in Pingling. The Taiwanese love their tea, and this plantation was an award-winning producer of Baozhong tea. All right, we are here in Taiwan, and in Taiwan, tea is a way of life. So we've driven up the windy roads into the mountains, outside of Taipei, to learn how to pick the tea, process the tea, drink the tea, and eat lunch with tea. Sounds like fun. In this particular plantation, fresh tea of the highest quality is picked by hand in the sun. I was given a woven basket and headed up the hill to the fields. Hi, how are you doing? How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes. Uh, so, can you tell me a little bit about the tea up here? Yes, uh, the, the tea is uh, Baozhong tea. That's different, Baozhong tea. Uh, different with uh, black tea and uh, green tea. And is this a really popular tea in Taiwan? Oh, uh, no, nah, just uh, North, North Taiwan. Okay. Yes. How do we pick the tea? Oh, uh, usually we pick uh, two leaves, uh, like, like this. Because the, the, top, the, the top leaf uh, is uh, fresh, more fresh. So do people come out here and actually pick the top leaves all day? Yes. Wow. This is a pretty big basket and there's lots of rows of tea to pick, so I better get started. Picking the topmost leaves by hand is just the first step in a long process that involves fermenting, drying, and locking in the flavor of the tea before it's ready to drink. The hillside smelled amazing, covered in the fresh tea plants, but the sun was hot. I didn't quite fill my basket. All right, we just came in from the fields after picking some tea, and the owner of uh, Pingling uh, treated us to some tea noodles. These noodles are very simple to make. It's just um, some fresh noodles with some tea oil, which, you know, this was my first time actually eating tea oil. You see this a lot in the States that you put it on your face. It's really good for you, but um, actually over here, they uh, use it to cook, and it's very healthy for you. They use it like we would use olive oil. Um, it is a very, you know, pricey oil. It's um, one of these bottles costs about 30 dollars or so, um, but a little goes a long way. It's very fragrant. Uh, you can use it for these noodles, you can use it for fish. It is actually made uh, from the bush underneath uh, where they grow the tea, these kind of berries. Um, so 
similar maybe to what olives, you know, growing, these berries create this tea oil. Uh, we also got to sample uh, a tea liqueur, which was very nice. Uh, you know, now in the States, it's really popular for uh, mixologists to infuse different liquors with actual tea leaves. But here, you know, this is already done for you, and it's, you know, a very delicate flavor. It's smooth and really refreshing to enjoy with the um, Baozhang tea. This is the spring batch, and it's very delicious. It's uh, victory tea, and uh, we're learning all about tea in Taiwan. It's tea time. That was my first taste of truly unique Taiwanese food. I was hungry for more, so I met up with Andy Wu, a food guru, at his studio in Taipei. All right, we are here in the beautiful kitchen of Andy Wu. Hi. He is a very famous uh, food expert here in Taiwan. He's a cookbook author, a radio host, yes. TV host, food writer, consultant, you name it, he can do it. And he is gonna show us um, a recipe today from uh, Hakka. Yes, Hakka. Hakka stir fry. Stir fry, fry yes. Stir. Yes. And um, tell us a little bit about Hakka and um, what it is while we begin okay. chopping. Ha Hakka is, is uh, uh, means in Chinese uh, uh, the people immigrate from their home to a new place but they can find a very good place to resident so they have to fight to the environment to struggle so they can get not many uh, fresh uh, ingredients so mm -hmm. they have to get anything they can get anywhere to make their food so it's a very typical and very cheap some ingredient they can get anywhere some some pork and uh, uh, bean curve and the dry squid just like this yeah so it's yeah, the, yes. the dried squid yeah rather than like the this. fresh because um they can't afford the fresh so then they yeah re, you uh, can smell uh, and it's a lot strong. stronger yes the right. smell yes he took the dried squid and put it in some hot water and let it soak to uh, Maybe 20 you know, minutes. About 20 minutes to get it back to soft. more of like the original form, more yeah. soft. Yes. So that's a chili? little chili pepper? Yes. It's the pork with the skin. So it's a pork belly with the skin. Yeah. To slice. So tell me a little bit about just Taiwanese cuisine in general. The Taiwanese uh, cook, uh, cuisine uh, incorporate with the China, uh, Japanese food, Deutsch food. Then, after the 1949, the over two million people uh, immigrate to Taiwan. From China. Yeah, from China. There are a lot of the there, there were a lot of very good chef. Mm -hmm. They came from different provinces. Yeah. They brought the different kind of the, the dishes and the technique. So it's the so highlighting yes. whatever the original so, flavor. So of if the you ingredient. come come to Taiwan now, you can find different kind of food uh, uh, incorporate in different way because the factor of the history. So this is the um, Chinese, Chinese um, celery. celery, which is a lot skinnier very skin. than our <laughs> celery. Yeah, very skinny. Yeah, and it smells smell stronger. Stronger. It smells than really the good. Celery. Yes, this the green onion. Green onion. Yes. Okay. So chop all the vegetable. That looks good. Yes. It's the bean curd. It's very nice. So. So we're ready to start, start frying. Yes, stir fry. Okay, now we have to put throw it all in. The pork belly? Pork, yeah, first. I love pork belly. If you cannot find the fresh uh, pork belly, you can, maybe you can try the Do bacon. Can you stir it around? Bacon, maybe. Bacon, yeah? Yes. Can we stir it around? Yes, okay. My father told me a lot of the traditional Hakka dishes when I was little boy. Yeah. When I was 10, 
Wow. Yes. So you started learning early. Yes. But I'm still young now. <laughs> That's very important. Yes. So let's uh, switch to this wooden one so it's not so noisy. Yes. There you go. Okay. Nice. This looks good. Why the uh, Chinese housewife use this one? They have to show their husband, I'm working hard now. So <laughs> when the husband heard the noise, they, they hear the noise. Her, and they her know. husband, oh, she's working in the kitchen now. <laughs> no? They should be able to tell just from the, the smell. The yeah, nice that's a good way. That's a yeah. good way too. <laughs> okay, now we can put some more. So we browned garlic? the uh, yes. pork belly. Now we're garlic? putting in some of the garlic and the Chili. chilies. Bring out the fragrance of that. Curd. The bean curd. Oh, nice yeah. color. Nice, nice color, color, nice smell. Mm. Mm. Nice variety of textures. Yeah. Oh, you are very nice, very good, very professional. Thank you. Chinese chef. <laughs> Haka. 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 I love learning about all different types of food and really? then. I don't think there's really any Hakka restaurants in Washington DC. No. Yet. Maybe you'll You will be the first Hakka chef in DC. There we go. You can come over and we can open a restaurant. Really? Yeah. Okay. I try my best. This is soy sauce? Soy sauce. Soy sauce. This is the soy sauce. So is this a traditional Hakka dish? Yes. Or did you come up with it? Traditional? It's the traditional way. Nice. So you can find this dish in each Hakka restaurant. Really? Yes. Wow. It's All small. with the same ingredients? Yes. Very beautiful, right? Yeah. The very, color. Very nice color. You can smell the good, the good fragrance. The celery, mm. the green onion, and the uh, garlic. Garlic. And chili. some chili. Dry sweet. Mm. Very nice. Very okay, good. done. Almost done. Almost you done. always think about my mom, my, my father, all the time when I prepare this dish. Okay. Start. Wow. Look at that. Come on, Lauren. That you looks are good. very professional Hakka chef. <laughs> you have owned your first Hakka restaurant in DC. Yep, wow. there we go. <laughs> okay. That looks good. Okay. Would you like to try some? Yes. Please. Oh wow, these are like master, <laughs> master, master chefs. Master chefs. Uh, this is for the uh, chef because they can keep away from the hot pot. But you mm. said us. You said that uh, you were telling me why. Legend? You, you why mean the chopstick legend? When you hold the, the chopstick just like this, lower, uh, then that means you will always stay with your family. Like a mama's boy. Like, oh, yes, yeah, mama's <laughs> boy. You, you, you always uh, stay with your family, your yeah. mom and your dad. If you hold your chopstick like this, higher, that means you will be go away, away from your home. So it's the legend. So uh, up to you. Okay, you I'm like going to try the pork. pork. Yeah. Mmm. Good flavor. Yeah. You can taste the actual flavor of the pork. Yeah. It's mm. nice to go with the rice or yeah. the wine. Wow. Mm. The dry sweet. Mmm. Good. Very good. Yeah. What a great job. Thank you so much for showing me this recipe. Thank you. Thank you mm. very much. Hopefully people at home will be able to try it as well. It's very easy, right? Very easy. Very easy. Simple so, steps, simple okay, cooking. Okay, you will be the first Hakka chef in this. There we now. go. <laughs> okay. We'll bring this on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> for the full recipe, check out my website at capitalcookingshow.com. Meanwhile, I'm going to find out where the locals get their fresh ingredients. All right, we just got to the Taipei Fish Market and I'm gonna go inside and see what it's all about. We, uh, we are pleased to show you the best fish market in Taipei. Yeah. And this market is only established about four months ago. Oh, wow, so it's brand new. Yeah, it is, yeah. And uh, uh, actually we surprised many people because we actually uh, 
invent this new concept of eating in Taiwan. Uh, we are the first uh, catering people to combine the wholesale, retailer, and, uh, and the restaurant all together in one building. Oh, wow, that's, that's nice. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's quite interesting. So one, a one-stop shop. I, exactly, one-stop <laughs> shop. The Taipei Fish Market not only boasts of an impressive selection of fresh fish from around the world, but also has retail shopping and a number of restaurants, all under one roof. Let's, uh, check Let's go inside. inside, yeah. Let's go inside, yeah. Wow, this is nice. Okay, uh, here you will see uh, uh, many live tanks, yeah? Yeah. And many we uh, distribute all the live species from all over the world. Uh, for example, this is what we call the king crab, yeah? And we are actually wow. buying them live, uh, shipping all the way from Hokkaido or from Russia. Wow! Yeah. I've never try. seen a crab that big. <laughs> <laughs> we try to promote more uh, sashimi great seafood. This is beautiful, what's this? Actually, this one is a local fish. This is what it's we call pretty. The, Yeah, uh, they are called the big eye. Big eye, yeah. Yeah, the big eye. And usually when we determine the fish, yeah, the freshness is to look at the the eyes. Yeah. If they look really shiny, that means they are pretty much alive. It says, yes. eat me! Eat me. <laughs> it says, hello, hello America! <laughs> James showed us all of the various kinds of seafood they had to offer that day. But the more I saw the tanks, the more I wanted to visit one of the restaurants on the other side of the market. Okay, let's check more, yeah? Yeah. So the next section is what we call the uh, standing eating culture. Oh. Uh, we actually invent this culture for uh, Tsukichi in Japan because uh, we want to um, make a more comfortable space mm -hmm. for people to eat. Yeah. And uh, we believe that standing and eating is good for uh, digestion. digestion. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So we are the very first uh, uh, catering people who actually invent this concept in Taiwan. Wow. Yeah, you can, you can take a look. Wow, look at all the people. Yeah, so far we have uh, 307 people waiting outside. Oh my gosh. Luckily, we didn't have to wait in line. There's no better place to get fresh seafood than the Taipei Fish Market, so I am going to dig in to some of this beautiful sushi. This one's the halibut and it's looking good to me. I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of soy and... Mmm. Delicious, it's um, very um, soft, delicate flavors. Cheers. <laughs> the Taipei fish market is something I wish I could bring back home with me in DC. Taiwan has an active nightlife from night markets to live music and even secret bars. Thank you. Of course I knew how to get in and how to get the bartender to show off one of his signature cocktails. All right, we are here at the Marquee Bar um, upstairs in the secret speakeasy with Angus, and uh, he's gonna show us some of the cocktails here. And we're gonna start with a Thai Mai. Okay, uh, this drink is, inspiration is from Mai Tai, and because Mai Tai is a uh, kind of tiki cocktail, and you know the Taiwan is between the tropical area, so uh, we have many many tropical fruit. And today I use a peach. It's from the Lala Mountain, very famous Taiwanese peach. And this is the season, so I want to share this drink. Thank you. So, so how did you get the inspiration to open up this uh, speakeasy? I want to, you know, make people comfortable because if you go out different uh, bar or club, it's sometimes too packed and too rush yeah. and drink too much, Crowded. but here, yeah. So people here, they will enjoy the moment here. So I could speak easy. So if people back home decide to come to Taiwan, maybe they can try to yeah. email you and see if there's a special way to get in. Yeah, or, or get my Facebook. 
Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. So we're muddling some muddling, peaches. Yes. Okay. I, I put the peaches. peaches and I use the Zacapa 23. It's very... Like an aged rum. Aged rum. You use, use a solar assistant. Mm -hmm. So so much flavor inside. And it's very good with peach. So mm -hmm. I put... Sounds good. good. Okay. Uh, I infused uh, this rum and it's called long end is kind of a uh, tropical fruit. Where, where do you have some? Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So it's like um, it's not fruit. fruit. It's already and this smoky. Is dry. dry smoky. Uh, this is really nice, like smoky flavor, like smoky smell. That's like kind of reminds you almost like of incense or something, but a really nice um, smell that I think. Um, he infused it with the rum, which, you know, I think you could infuse this with other things like whiskey and probably get a really nice flavor. Yeah. Really yeah. 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 Then your whiskey becomes an island. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, I put uh, Zakama first and then a little bit long and infused What rum. type of rum did you use to infuse that? Uh, pom uh, Pompero. Okay. It's a white rum. Oh, really? White? And so then, white it, then that turned it. The and turn it, yeah, stock. Oh, okay. So it's wow. And sugar syrup. I wonder if there's anything similar that you could use if you didn't have that. You mean in state? Yeah. No idea. No. Maybe come to Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> what um, uh, what did you just pour in there? Lemon juice? Lemon juice. Lime juice? Lime juice okay. and a bitters. Which kind of bitters is this? Dairy number six. Okay. One of my favorite bitters. Oh, orange. 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 Bitters. Orange. Bitters. That's it. Nice. So two rums. Two rums. Bitters. Orange bitters. Some lime juice. Stirring the muddled peaches. Wow. It's very good. Okay. Was that the hot shake? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one called? Oh, uh, just just a shake. Just a shake. Just a shake. Oh wow! Looks pretty. What type of leaf is that? It's a bamboo. Bamboo leaf. Bamboo nice. Leaf. Pretty. Nice touch. Nugget. Because I won't give the more uh, smoky flavor, oh, so wow. I, I burn it. Ooh. Burn it first. Fancy. And pour it. Look at that. Smell the smoky. Mmm. Smells like campfire. Mmm. Very nice. Yeah. Refreshing. Refreshing. Yes. And it doesn't taste strong at all. It tastes. Uh, Even I put uh, like a lot some of peaches. Rum. Thank you, Angus. Thanks for um, showing us these drinks. It's my pleasure. Cheers. Gam Gambe. Gambe. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Our Taiwanese adventure is just beginning. Join us next time when we'll visit a Buddhist monastery, learn how to whip up bubble tea, and explore the street food at a night market like a local.